I want to spend just a couple minutes talking about uh, a few general principles um, and specifically address non mitral procedures. So when we're doing, when you're thinking about the maze procedure and your patient population, you want to um, understand a few principles of how to uh, adopt the maze and, and put it into your uh, practice. So what are those principles? The most important thing to remember is the primary reason for the cardiac surgery procedure. Why are you there? All right. Um, once you're started, you must be willing to abandon the maze procedure if there's poor tissue quality, unexpected TEE findings, the operative technical challenges, et cetera. All of, the, all of you as surgeons know that these issues arise uh, almost on a weekly basis. And it's important to, to be willing to back out if uh, you run into those. In general, I think it's important to think of, to begin again to think about the, uh, when you're adding the maze procedure and the Cox maze for it to work from the posterior part of the heart to the anterior part of the heart. And I'm gonna go into this in a little bit and when it's applied to cabbage and AVR and multivalve. If a biatrial procedure is planned, be willing to abandon the right atrial procedure if encountering technical challenges with the primary operation Avoid prolonging the aortic cross clamp time. And the corollary to this is when first beginning, do the right atrial lesion set off the aortic cross clamp. The tissue integrity should be assessed throughout the course of the operation. Abort any time. If you're having trouble and you have concern about the tissues and, and how they're being handled, the patient's been on steroids or whatever. Uh, steroids, in my mind, are not a, not a contraindication, but I think it's something to think about if you've got um, a diabetic. A uh, small little lady needs a mitral valve and she's on steroids. That's a patient in my mind that I may be thinking about, okay, I may have to abort this at some point. Let me make a point about venous cannulation. So venous cannulation strategy should be dictated by the planned operation and the guidelines indication for a Cox maze four. Venous cannulation should not be dictated by the primary operation, all right, alone when the CMIV is indicated. Um, just because somebody is having a cabbage doesn't mean that, oh, well, I, I don't really want to do bicable cannulation. Bicable cannulation only adds about three to four minutes, and that should not be a hurdle uh, for the patient not to have a Cox maze four if they have um, very serious uh, atrial fibrillation, meaning persistent or longstanding persistent AF. So let's look at cabbage and how this is different from, say, a mitral. Um, so when I do cabbage operations, I go on pump on, uh, on, and do the right PVI on pump before cross clamp, place the aortic cross clamp, do the left PVI, do the left atrial lesion, appendage lesion, do a limited left atriotomy. You don't have to do a huge left atriotomy. All, you need to see the floor, the roof, the mitral, and coronary sinus lesion set. That's all you need to see. Um, you need to be able to see the right pulmonary veins, the left pulmonary veins, and the mitral annulus. Depending on which grafts are being done, the right atrial lesion set is next versus uh, uh, the cabbage. And if the REMA is being used, you must do the right atrial lesion set first because obviously you don't want that draped across the area where you're working. The left atrial uh, appendage clip, the atrial clip is placed at the end of the procedure depending upon the graft status. If you've used the left internal mammary artery on occasion, I would put that, and sir, just put that to the OM, or a saphenous vein graft is in proximity to the left atrial appendage. Um, I would, in most of those cases, I would not put the clip on, and I would just transect and oversew the left atrial appendage because I worry about there being um, friction erosion on the lima, which, of course, you know, coming off from the subclavian, if you're going to the obtuse marginal, it's way back there and will will drape right through the um, to the groove with the takeoff of the um, appendage uh, in the region of the, of the cerf. Don't want erosion in that area. I've never seen that, but that is a theoretical concern. So for an AVR, what are the special considerations? Again, you want to do the right side pulmonary vein on pump or a cross clamp. You want to uh, put the cross clamp on and then go examine the aortic root. Again, this gets to the principle of remembering why you're there. You want to examine the aortic root, excise the aortic valve to anticipate how much of time is needed for the aortic valve. You may run into something, abscess that you don't know about, um, an unknown um, uh, VSD or some reconstruction of the root that's going to be very complicated. 
So you want to know that before you get too far deep into doing um, the Cox maze four. Complete the maze as in the cabbage and complete the AVR, place the clip. Let's say if you're doing a mitral valve repair, I think we've gone through this completely and we don't need to uh, reiterate on that. If you're doing a multi-valve procedure, you're gonna do the right pulmonary veins and do the aortic cross clamp, left pulmonary veins and left atrial lesion. Um, again, you wanna excise the AV and assess for unknown pathology. Uh, left atriotomy, floor roof, mitral and coronary sinus lesions. You wanna place, do the mitral valve repair and clip replacement, do the AVR, and then finally finish up with the right atrial lesions, then the tricuspid valve repair. Be sure to do the right atrial lesions first before you do the tricuspid valve repair because once the ring is in place, you're not going to be able to get com a complete uh, lesion and you'll end up with a, uh, a gap at the, um, at, the, um, um, at the annulus. So in summary, um, I think in 20, I should say 2020 now, we must have a valid reason, I really feel, that uh, for not performing concomitant AF surgery in patients with a history of AF who are undergoing cabbage mitral valve repair, AVR, or cabbage plus AVR. Uh, and this sort of gets into what I was posing to you before. When you're sitting across the table and you're looking at your patient and you know they've had uh, paroxysmal persistent or longstanding persistent uh, atrial fibrillation, I feel that all of us should work toward looking at that patient like you're going to do an ablation procedure, a Coxmase 4 procedure, unless you find some reason not to do it rather than looking for an ideal candidate in, in whom to do it. Otherwise, I really feel like that we're not providing an acceptable standard of care to our, to our patients.